those who are unfamiliar with the Philippine real estate market or are currently doing research may come across a few terms or acronyms or just a few different things that may not make a lot of sense. Today on Interesting Asia, we're going to assist with that process by going over some of the different terms and lingo of the Philippine real estate market. Let's start with a few of the most notable real estate terms you are likely to hear when searching for or looking for real estate in the Philippines. Perhaps there is no phrase used more frequently than pre-selling. For most folks outside of the country, they will know pre-selling as buying off plan. Off plan, pre-selling, no matter what you call it, it is the process of purchasing a property, whether it be a condominium unit or an off-plan house from a developer while a project is in the planning or construction phase. This is usually done because prices are much cheaper to buy during this phase. Of course, the downside is that you don't get to see the final product. The opposite of pre-selling would be RFO or ready for occupancy. These are units that, as the name implies, are ready for you to move into today. That means the project, whether it be a condominium or a house and lot development, is completed to a certain extent and has units that you can go in and physically see and touch. One thing to note when it comes to RFO or ready for occupancy units, this doesn't necessarily mean fully furnished. Some people misunderstand this as being a unit that will have everything you need to live and that is not always the case. Be sure to check with the real estate agent or developer to see just what this unit will come with and what it may not have included because RFO can mean anything from simply a finished unit that is ready for plugins or it can mean just a completed unit with furnishings and all hookups already there. A term many foreign buyers may hear but not a term many foreign buyers will hear but may not know what it stands for is OFW. This is overseas foreign worker or in other words a Filipino citizen who works abroad. This group plays an increasingly important role across the country's real estate sector. They continue to buy property for both investment purposes as well as for eventual repatriation and to provide housing for family members. The activity or involvement of OFWs in the Philippine real estate market often coincides with just how weak or strong the Philippine peso is. If it's weaker and they get more bang for their buck, it's more likely to see more OFWs invest in real estate. Alternatively, when the peso is stronger against foreign currencies, there tends to be less activity amongst this group. Regardless, OFWs are a key driver of the Philippine real estate market overall and are something you're going to want to understand when making an investment as a foreigner. Speaking of foreigners, let's go over the sort of rules on foreign ownership in the Philippines as it relates to real estate. Foreigners can own condo units in the Philippines, but this group cannot hold more than 40% of units in a single condominium building. Meanwhile, non-Filipinos may not acquire house and lot properties or land on a freehold basis. Leasing is available to foreigners, but they cannot legally own land or houses in the country. Finally, let's go over two abbreviations that have had a huge impact on the Philippine real estate market overall. These being BPO and POGO or POGO. These two industries have created millions of jobs, attracted significant investment, and fueled local property markets in the Philippines. We'll start with POGO because this is the one that seems to be more controversial. So POGO, P-O-G-O, stands for Philippine Offshore Gaming Operator. These are companies that run online gaming websites and it is a huge sector employing a significant expat population in addition to domestic workers. Pre-pandemic, these were fueling huge surges in price increases and demand increases in places like Metro Manila. However, with the pandemic hitting and China also trying to crack down on 
pogo companies that were targeting chinese nationals this sector has come under quite a bit of scrutiny in recent years the number of pogos in the philippines continues to dwindle and there has been a recent push to ban all pogo operators from the philippines and that process is currently on going while the impact of pogos is much less on real estate than it had been pre-pandemic losing these altogether may also adversely impact the country's real estate market so it's just something to keep in mind regardless of if you're buying residential uh, real estate in one of the areas where it was driving demand or office space where these were again just requiring large amounts of office space that may no longer be required bpos on the other hand are here to stay in the philippines if you don't know what bpo stands for it is an abbreviation of business process outsourcing this industry sees overseas companies outsource non-primary business activities to firms located in the philippines it has become a multi-billion dollar sector that now employs millions of people across the country bpos have been a huge driver of real estate in the country obviously these firms need office space which has become quite important in the aftermath of the pandemic with many bpos now looking for new offices or expanding or just scaling to meet their needs there is also a knock-on effect to the residential sector because more people employed by bpo companies means more potential home buyers or more potential renters so if you are a real estate investor purchasing a condominium near the headquarters for a bpo may be more favorable than purchasing a unit somewhere else in a city or town or wherever you may be looking to buy finally we will end with build better more this is the philippine government's infrastructure program which has targeted 194 key projects to invest in across the country build better more includes several notable projects including the rehabilitation of naia airport and several rail and hospital projects across the country Financing for these projects is expected to come via private public partnerships and getting these off the ground, getting these completed is seen as really vital for the country's overall economic situation as well as the real estate market as completing these could lead to increased investment both from domestic buyers as well as overseas investors there you have it that is just a very brief look at some of the terms and lingo and just factors you need to know about the philippine real estate market hopefully this provided at least a little help for you on your property journey that does it for me i'm shyan hollis this is interesting asia and as always keep it interesting